Hello and welcome back to the video number 13 in the series of building a real world application using the Entity Framework 6. Man, that's a mouthful. Uh, today, it's not unlucky 13 because we have probably the shortest video of the series because we are actually going to reap the rewards of our design. Today we're going to talk about the user maintenance form. And if you'll remember back, the user maintenance form is nothing but a combination of two user controls which we've already written. The first one being the edit person control, and the second one being the user search control. And then, a little bit of security if you're an administrator, we're going to hide that user search control. So there's, you're just going to be able to edit your information. So if we remember, I've got to show it here right here. A little bit about how it works. We can go to admin, we can go user maintenance, and in which case I'm an administrator. So I can search for people, like I can type in, and it predicts if I put Max in here, it fills in Mad Max, and you can click, and then it, if I double click, it fills in the person, and we can edit and clear and all of that stuff. Uh, so nothing magic there. The second way to this form is through Edit My Info. And if I go to Edit My Info, because I'm an administrator, I see this, but you'll notice the form is automatically filled out for me. So I could update my password or do anything I wanted, which is really handy. Um, so I'm going to show you how hard it was to do this and you're probably going to be a little bit surprised. So this is a form in the designer. You'll see if I click on the right side I get in my properties over here I get an edit person control. Let me scroll this up for you. It's an edit person control. It has event of load. And if we look over here that's it, right? One event to find, which is load. And then on the left side, we've got the person search control. And you'll notice it has a person selected event. So it would make sense logically when we look at this, right? When we select a person, we're going to show them on the right, and then we can edit and do whatever we want to do with that person. So let's look at how we wired this in. And you'll see that this form is an amazing 63 lines of code long. Um, all we do is when we instantiate this form, we can do it with an empty constructor, as in probably the search, right? And we can do it with a person data transfer object defined, and this would be the identity object from the main form if we're going to edit my info, right? Remember how it magically filled in with your information? Well, that's because the main form knows who's logged into the application. So it sends that person data transfer object over to this form. And then we go in and we say, OK, well, let's resolve the security. And then let's go in and initialize the control for the edit person control and send that same object through and fill in that form. And then we're ready to rock and roll. There's nothing to it. So there's a little bit of security on this form. We go and we look at the identity on the main form. If you remember back, I taught you that trick about you can, uh, you can identify a static variable and then have access to anything on the main form. And then we say, look, if, and I do more than hide, I guess I kind of led you astray, but if you're not a manager, we actually remove the user control search, the group box and everything in it. So it's not there. And then we go in and we say set the manager is enabled is false, the clear manager enabled is false, and the is manager enabled is false. And that makes sense, right? If we look over here, if you're not a manager, you don't have the right to tinker with whether or not other people are managers or make yourself a manager for that instance, right? Be kind of nice, but no. Otherwise, it's all enabled. No big deal. So we do that. When we load, we resolve the security. And then, that is really it. On the form load, we resolve the security. When it comes up, no big deal. And there is no more code in this form. And you say, why? Well, if we remember back to the edit user control, everything it needs to know and exist is defined and, and instantiated on the control but mostly in the middleware objects. If we want to save a person, how do we do that? Well, we make a static call to the, here's a get person, that's how we get people. 
if we want to go in and we want to set managers and do things like that, we can go to the utility classes, get the display names of the managers. Everything's done through the middleware. So even something as complicated as editing a user on the GUI side with definitions and everything is under, you know, you take all the garbage out, we're under 100 lines of code. So it's pretty easy. So that's how it all works. So the user maintenance form is very, very simple. It is nothing but a stitching of user controls. And that's how it should be. We can reuse these user controls anywhere we want. All we've got to do is on the edit person control, you'll remember we have a public function called initialize a control where you can send it a person you want to edit. That's how we fill it in for edit my info. Or, or, it's smart enough if you click new and you go in and send it a new person that it will save that person. Why? Because the middleware is smart enough on the save event if the primary key is less than zero which remember when we declare a new object it's initialized at negative one the middleware is smart enough to know this is a new person. Right? Now it's going to check your email to see if you're already in the database and if you are oh, it's going to throw an error and say sorry this person's already there but it's intelligent which makes it a whole lot easier to write the GUIs that are associated with it. So I wish I could tell you I had more for you but as this thing is sectioned up the user maintenance control is really easy. I'm going to check this in for you. Uh, try to get this video posted tonight and uh, I ask that you please do subscribe, support the channel. We, we really appreciate it. Uh, give the video a thumbs up. Um, we appreciate the feedback, the questions. Uh, the link pad video came out today as a result of the questions I get directly from this video uh, series. A lot of link questions coming in, so I'll be making a few link videos. Um, but I promise you, if you ask me a question, Dean Bortel, B-O-R-T-E-L-L -L at gmail.com, or just send me a message through YouTube, I will answer you. Okay? So thanks for your time, thanks for your attention, and thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time.